before I do this, let me, let me use hope. Okay? Let me say this. There's, there's too many of you that are not talking enough. <laughs> and I'm going to be real quick because that looks really, really good. <laughs> I just saw this too, you know, uh, you know my dad, I think about him all the time, and uh, so many, <laughs> so many little sayings, you know, like, you know, Jimmy, if you can't get it done in 24 hours a day, you got to work nights, and just, just, so many things that he taught me. But, uh, but I was sitting there, you know, just thinking, a person that was so prominent in Greenbar County was Yes. You know, and, uh, and I think about George Aid and Lawson Hamilton and my dad and Vic Green and on and on and on. And I'm going to forget, I'm going to forget several. You know, but uh, but you know, Mr. Hamilton always called me Boom Boom, <laughs> and and we'd play golf every now and then, and I could hit it a long ways, and we'd play in a Captain's Choice tournament, and we had a lot of fun together, lots and lots of fun. When my dad was sick in in the uh, Duke Hospital. We didn't really think he was bad sick, and I played in his place in the Duke Children's Classic. And I played with Mr. Hamilton, and Perry Como was the spokesperson or whatever. And they took our picture, and Mr. Hamilton said, Pick Perry up, Boom Boom. <laughs> and so I was going to hold him in my arms while they took our picture on the first tee. Perry didn't want to do that. Because <laughs> he knew I'd probably drop him and he was at the age that he didn't want to be dropped. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Tripp, your dad was amazing and I love him and love you guys in every way. But now I've got a special, special presentation to somebody. This is, you know, I've, I've been able to give out, probably I've given five of these in two and a half to three years. Because I don't think y'all just pass these out like Kool-Aid. I think this is to a very, very, very special deserving person. But this is the Distinguished West Virginian Award to the Honorable, I guess it's Andrea A. Pendleton. for you that's got our capital and I'm going to give you this because if I try to pin it on you it'll be really ugly. <laughs> so nevertheless, uh, you know, I love you with all of us. So mm -hmm. can I tell a little story you can tell all you want. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Well, that was quick. Okay. <laughs> okay you can He's my friend. I'm not taking advantage of him. 
Okay, I'd, do it, I'd go around the horn. <laughs> but this one particular time, we were at a, at a thing in Beckley that you'd ask us all to come and do. And I get home and you pass out uh, some things for. Uh, wait just a minute, my brain is gone. That's why I'm not going to be mayor anymore. My brain leaves me. Um, that, uh, for. Uh, No. Generator. Generator. Thank you, Drew. <laughs> for the generators. And it was like, all, I read it that night and I read it online. And Jimmy was passing out generators that afternoon. You know, formally over line, who's going to get the generators? And I come home from a thing that he had had and I kept reading it on the internet and said, he's passed over Raynell. So I go back to look for Raynell again. And then I go back again and look for Raynell. By 11.30, I was in bed. <laughs> So then I get up early the next morning and I'm pacing the floor, knowing these three generators needed to be in our, in our town. So I'm pacing the floor. What do I do? I click my phone, call Jimmy. I, I phone Jimmy, and he didn't answer. It was five minutes later when he calls back. He said, what's wrong, Andy? What's wrong, Andy? And I started crying because he called back. And I said, he said, what's wrong, Andy? I said, I don't have my generator, Jimmy. <laughs> he said, don't worry. I'll take care of it, Andy. I'll take care of it. <laughs> but it's still in the works, Jimmy. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you for what you've done for Randy. You're such a value to this community, to the, to the city, to the state, to the United States. That's why President Trump always calls on you, Jimmy. Tell him. <laughs> you are so special to me and those around me and to our community and to my friends. And thank you for inviting me and making me so, feel so special here as well as my friends. I was so amazed at looking through the little hallway and I see these faces I knew and I believe they couldn't come from all over. And God bless you, Kathy. I believe <laughs> And I looked through and then there's that suit. I've seen the suit. <laughs> now, Jim, we, we've had lunch together several times at Fruits of Labor. And I said, Jerome Hoyer, and I said, I've, I've got to quit. This is like four, two years ago. I've got to quit. She said, he said, Andy, just hold on. We'll quit together. Did you hear that, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> he, he's not quitting. He's like, oh. <laughs> that means you got to stay. <laughs> but anyway, I thank all my friends. I thank Randy. I thank my kids. I miss uh, my, my granddaughter, Megan. I'm sorry she's not here. My granddaughter, Becca. My granddaughter, Becca, is a great, I will tell you, She's a registered nurse at the, at, the, at the Washington Hospital in D.C. in oncology pediatrics. And she said they're her kids. They're her kids. She's a special girl. Thank you, Becca. <laughs> and we have Morgan over there who's at West Virginia University Gymnastics. She's a cheerleader. She's a cheerleader in college now, and she's doing real well. She just doesn't listen to me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Randy makes it every day, when are you getting home? When are you getting out? When are you getting out? You better be getting out, Andy. <laughs> being mayor. So I'm out, and I think the worst thing I have to say about not being mayor is that I just don't go to work. I love going to work. I love making a difference. I love helping people. and. Uh, I don't mind not being mayor, it's just not going to work. But I am going to work and we'll build a community building. Um, if you don't have something to do in life, life isn't worth much to do anything with unless you've got to help people. And uh, I, great, I take great pleasure and pride in, in helping people. I don't, expect rewards for it, the reward I get is the smile on the face or the love or going down to the hallway, I don't, even a Walmart. They come up to me and say, you're Andy, aren't you? And I said, yes. And she said, 
she started crying. I've never met you, but I love you. Aww. Yeah. And I get all kinds of remarks just going out of town, uh, people that remark where they've seen me on TV. And uh, if you're not a good person, it doesn't, uh, if you don't do something like leave your footsteps behind, like Jesus did, I get up every morning and I read out of my Bible and ask God to give me the wisdom to, talk, to give me the thoughts. And no matter if somebody's upset, I just keep going and I go forward. So I hope that when I, I meet with kids and I say, reach for the sky, just do something with yourself. Just keep going. Reach for the sky. No matter what, how, how much you reach, just keep reaching and do more and more. Get back and get back. God bless you, Jimmy. God bless my family. God bless my friends. God bless all of you all. God bless you all. My best friends. My family. My friends from afar. And then there's Randy. <laughs> so much. Thank you. Thank you, Trip. Appreciate you. And then there's my sister Sherry and my brother Richard. My brother Richard, I love you.